going on guys? This is Burrs. I want to talk to you today about the Jan Sport Klamath 75 backpack. And I've been using this for the greater part of probably about six months to a year. And I got it in reference to actually this Gregory Volterra 75, which is a foreign made pack. Uh, I believe Gregory actually used to make USA made packs, but you know, it's a foreign made pack that's in the $300 price range. What I wanted to do was actually get a pack that was around half its price, which is what this one is, and it's also foreign made, and try and compare them because, in my opinion, the Gregory is a little bit overpriced at the price point it is. Now, I've been pleasantly surprised with how this has uh, you know, worked. They actually, the suspension system is extremely comfortable. It really holds you know, the weight very well. Uh, when you're going out there and hiking and backpacking and, and moving about. Now this is four pounds and 13 ounces, and that is what I would call kind of mid-weight. You know, it's not super heavy. It's definitely not super light, but it's in the middle part, and we're gonna find a lot of packs on the market, four pounds, 13 ounces. Compared to this Gregory Balterra, which I reviewed before, and which used to be my main pack, you know, that was five pounds, 10 ounces. So I'm shedding about almost a pound off using this pack. Uh, the suspension system is great. The uh, buckles used are pretty decent and the zippers are good as well. Just go ahead and get into some of the Let's details. Let's start at the top here with the, the uh, pouch on the top. This is a very large pouch and the way that it actually uh, works is you have a zipper that goes from one side to the other. Uh, there's no um, craziness going on. It's really, really simple. And as you can see there, and that opens up and then you have your ability to get all your stuff in here. I have some stuff I'm actually gonna be testing soon like this Optimus uh, stove and some fuel for it. And I have my medical kit and some of my other stuff in here, uh, like a pack uh, cover and uh, a fire burning stove, you know, emergency blanket, you know, and that's that kind of stuff I keep at the top because it's heavy and I like to keep my way at the top. As you can see on the back here, it has a really cool suspension and it's completely adjustable. You can actually take this and move from side to side and you can move up and down as far as, you know, the different person uh, that you are. As you can see down here, it has actual numbers as far as what your torso length is. So it's really adjustable and it has this one main stay in the middle, but you can adjust it out. So say someone else wants to carry your pack or, or whatever, say someone wants to borrow it, you can easily adjust this up and down. And as you can see, you know, based on this huge channel down the middle and having these pad, this nice padding right here, it allows for airflow to get in there and keep your back cool as you're hiking. So that's definitely a huge, huge uh, benefit that I've seen uh, over my use. As far as the padding goes, you know, it's not uh, air mesh or anything like that, it's just regular pads. I'd say it's pretty much medium padded, so shoulder straps are pretty simple as far as design goes, and you have some uh, retainers here where I keep a small mini uh, compass. And I actually jerry-rigged on my uh, uh, more black knife right here, as you can see. So I like to have that there, um, and it, it holds on there really well. As far as the buckles go, you know, they're definitely medium grade. They're not, you know, top of the line stuff, but then again, you're not paying top of the line price. Uh, you're paying about $150 for this, which I think is a little excessive, and we'll talk in the, in the future of the video about that. Turning it around here, I'll go ahead and go to the front, and we'll talk about that. So what you do to get this top pouch off is you just hit this buckle right here, and on here on the opposite side, you can get access to the uh, inside of the pack. I like to carry a uh, tarp with me, just a cut up tarp, and that way I can put my stuff on the ground, etc. Now, what you have on the front here is a pouch that goes down the middle where you can hold you know, stuff. I have all my uh, hammock you know, tie out points and stakes, etc. in there. And knock something else down. <laughs> then I have my Sawyer uh, water filter in here. This is a gravity filter. So that's basically what I carry uh, on the front here. There's nothing really el much else in there. I like to try to keep stuff as light as possible. As far as the side goes, you know, this was this was very interesting to me as far as one side pocket is actually a pocket, but the other side pocket, which is this one, gives you access into the pack. So that was really interesting to me. The fact that you can take this down and see the inside of your pack and get to it relatively quickly without having to take the uh, top off. Whereas the other side here, when you open it up, it is its own standalone pouch. So I have, you know, my uh, headlamp in there. I got my gloves and, uh, you know, like a fire kit. And that's pretty much all else I have in here. Let's see what else I have. Oh yeah, I got the uh, poop pouch and uh, just a little, you know, saw for uh, doing whatever I'm doing out there. So that's what I have on this side here. And that's its own standalone pouch. As you can see on the bottom here, you do have mesh uh, where you can put water containers. I have these uh, vapor eclipse uh, water bottles there. They're flexible and I have a review on those. Had a ranger band there. 
And on the other side, I have another flexible uh, water container bottle, which is the Platypus Plus bottle, which I review on that too. And that basically gets you down to the bottom here where you can actually put stuff on here. So I have a Shmau on here and it adjusts out pretty far. And you can put a wool blanket or whatever you're looking to uh, put on the bottom here. You can do that relatively easily. A lot of room to adjust. Usually in the winter time, what I'll do is I'll put a quarter zip in here and then uh, a schma or something and, and tie it down. Lots of attachment points on this. You have the ability to grab the bag here and here. You have an attachment point here and here. So putting like an ax or anything on here, it's really easy to do and it's really great. And as you can see on the bottom here, these, these uh, tie out points actually come down to the bottom. So you can put something on the bottom. You don't have to put it directly on the front like I had it. Now to get into the sleeping bag uh, compartment, it's basically like almost every other pack on the market. Just go ahead and open that up. You can get to your sleeping bag. This is a, uh, I'd say like a early winter bag. This is about a uh, 20 degree bag that I have here. It fits in there really easily. No problems whatsoever. You can see a little bit of, uh, you can actually see that I have some uh, leaves in here. <laughs> So, you know, it's a nice big compartment. You can fit, you know, pretty much any sleeping bag in there as long as you're not getting crazy and getting into the uh, big, heavy, negative 15 bags, etc. Let's go up to the top here now. And I'll try to show you this the best I can. If I can, I'll put pictures in. So basically what you have on the inside is um, you have an area here where you can put a bladder, a uh, nice hydration bladder. And you have basically a huge, you know, uh, cavity to stuff your stuff down in there. Now, of course, you want to fill your bag, you know, as best you can as far as where to put your heavy stuff and light stuff. And I'm not going to talk about that today because this is a bag review, but you know, it's just basically an empty cavity with a hydration bladder pouch. Beyond that, there's nothing else in here. Um, there's no other, you know, uh, pockets or anything like that. It's super simple. You know, you're looking at 4,700 cubic inches of space with this pack. Um, you know, I never use all of it just because I try to keep the weight down. But as far as the as far as the quality and what's used, you know, this is made of uh, ripstop polyester, and uh, you know, it's really I haven't had any problems whatsoever going into you know, thorny areas, putting this thing on the ground. And I grant I do use a tarp for that. As you can see, the bottom here doesn't really have you know pretty much any wear and tear on it. Um, but it's held up really well, and I think the one thing they could do is maybe strategically look where they can use lighter materials. Uh, Kelty, I know in the marketplace is using heavier materials on the bottom, lighter materials on the top because you don't have, you know, the wear and tear that uh, you'd have on the bottom towards the top. So they're saving weight that way. And that's something I like to see, you know, Jansport get into. I think that'd definitely help out with the weight uh, of this bag. As far as the hardware of this bag goes, you know, you're not getting like YKK zippers. You're not getting, you know, USA made uh, buckles like ITW. You know, you're getting you know, just to get by kind of stuff. Now granted, it hasn't broke on me. And the thing that I always pick on companies for is the fact of how their buckles um, actually, you know, click and hold into place. And, you know, with these, you're getting a medium kind of duty. You're not getting really, really light ones to take off, but, you know, they definitely could come off accidentally. I haven't had that happen yet. So, you know, I'm not saying that it will happen, but it's definitely a thought that you want to keep in the back of your mind. You know, it has a drawstring on the top, uh, as you can see there. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you have side compression straps. Um, and like I said, you have the ability to put stuff on here wherever you want. And you have a nice suspension system. That's really what makes up this pack is a suspension system. Um, you know, for all the other small shortcomings it has, the suspension on this thing and the fact of how comfortable it is, um, is really what keeps me using it over the Gregory um, over there. So, you know, it's definitely comfortable. The waistband has nice comfort to it, has some little uh, area right here to actually put some, uh, you know, smaller items. And, uh, you know, you have a lot of adjustment in the waist area in case, you know, Bigfoot's gonna use this someday. Um, if you're gonna give it to him, he could definitely, uh, you know, adjust it out to his size. But it's held up really well. And, you know, I can't say anything, you know, negative about how it's performed because it's performed well for me. So if you guys are in the market for a pack, and uh, $150 range is what you're looking for. You don't want to spend a ton of money on like an Osprey or a Gregory. Um, you know, this is definitely more in, you know, the Kelty price range. And as far as the quality compared to Kelty is, it's uh, competitive, uh, but it's not up to Kelty standards. And I think they could definitely do some more uh, R&D on making these, this bag a little bit lighter and maybe using some different buckles and such. But uh, 
I'd like to see the price actually come down on this pack to around the 125 mark. I think it would be super competitive in that area. And I think people would definitely be jumping on it at that price. So if you guys have any questions or anything, go ahead and let me know. If you guys have any Jansport packs as far as this uh, Klamath series, they also have 65 um, I think a 55, 55, 65, and this is a 75 uh, liter. You know, if you have any of those, go ahead and put it in the comments down below, or better yet, make a video about it. And until next time, later. So you can actually uh, take, 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 you can take, 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 take. How many times can I say it? <laughs>